good sunday morning like you follow christian church hope everybody's having a great sunday and i hope that we get to see you at church today so uh, if you're just waking up get up and get around please and come up to the building and you'll have a fantastic day with uh, people who have like faith and uh, we will just uh, celebrate our christianity and spend time together and learn more about Christ and praise Him for all the awesome things that He's done in our lives. We are in Matthew 21, but before I get into that, there's a couple of things I want to talk about this morning that I think are uh, just really important. Uh, Clint had surgery this last week on his shoulder, and he's recuperating from that, and uh, I know that uh, there's got to be a great deal of pain that goes along with that, so please pray for him. And then uh, Clint and Misty are expecting a new grandbaby anytime. Mallory and her husband uh, have a little girl coming, and so just keep all that in your prayers. And, uh, and please think about that family today. Uh, Jennifer Banfield, our daughter, is uh, going to have gallbladder surgery on Monday, and uh, I just pray that uh, you all will lift her up please, that uh, she'll heal quickly and that she'll have a little pain, and uh, I just thank you for that so much. Uh, please think about Ramona, you know, she's in the process of her last treatment, cancer, and uh, the good news is the tumor has shrunk, and that after she has the last treatment, they're going to evaluate uh, when they're going to do surgery and try to get the rest of it. I want you to please keep uh, our sweet little D, beautiful little D Chaffin in your prayers. And um, I want you to please think about uh, Ed. He's having some kidney stones blasted. And um, so we need to pray for Ed for that. And then Rita has asked for prayers for Benny Coffey, who's in the uh, hospital. I want to thank uh, D and Steve uh, for the cannas. The beautiful orange cannas, they gave me plants last summer and they are just so gorgeous and every time I look at them I think about the generosity of Steve and Dee and how sweet they were to share with me. And uh, I want to tell you that our ladies meeting last week was phenomenal and that uh, if you're uh, looking for a wonderful group of women to spend time with and that you are a woman, <laughs> that uh, we have a great ladies meeting once a month. We're getting ready to start a new unit. And this one is going to deal with uh, painting a portrait of Christ. And we're gonna have a wonderful project to kick it off where we all get to paint something. So, you know, if you have any questions about that, ask Julie or Christy, either one. Um, I also want to mention to you that, uh, oh, from our ladies' meeting, my earrings, I won the door prize. Actually, everybody wins. <laughs> but uh, we have jewelry that uh, comes from Carla and Wayne when they, get, when they take their South Texas trip every year. They bring things back and they share them with uh, all of us. Okay, and I want to mention to you that on Wednesday nights, we're studying A Case for Christ, and Jeremy's doing an awesome job with that. Of course, that's a book written by Lee Strobel, and uh, he's also got a video that we've been watching. It's an incredible study, uh, you know. Uh, so if you're looking for something to do on Wednesday night and you want to learn more about uh, why you believe and strengthen your faith, then come up on Wednesday nights and spend time with us in the adult classroom at 6.30. Okay. Let's talk about Matthew 21, and what I'm going to talk about this morning is Jesus clearing the temple. Now this is, let me just start with verses 12 and 13. So Jesus entered the temple, and he began to drive out all the people buying and selling animals for sacrifice. He knocked over the tables of the money changers and the chairs of those selling doves. He said to them, the scriptures declare the temple will be called a house of prayer, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. Now, before we go any further, did you get that picture in your head of Jesus, our precious, sweet, loving, graceful, gracious Jesus has walked into the temple and he's began to drive people out. He's pushing them out. 
and he's knocking over tables and you know basically he's just uh, he's clearing the temple now you know is this the first time this has happened well when we studied the book of John if you would look over in John 2 13 through 17 you're gonna see the same thing but guess what that was at the beginning of his ministry now we're in the last week of his ministry this is one of those things that kind of culminates the end thing where the scribes the Pharisees the Sadducees the chief priests they say that did it that did it he came in the temple he started kicking over tables and throwing people out I mean he was in an angry rage oh have you ever been told that it's a sin to get mad well let me tell you what Jesus never sinned but he got mad he got really mad and we need to talk about that in just a minute because there's a difference in just getting angry and getting angry for the right reason so the merchants and the money changers set up their booths in the court for the Gentiles in the temple now let, let's do some history here you know the Gentiles were considered unclean no one can touch the Gentiles because if you touch a Gentile then you're gonna to have to be ceremonially cleaned because they're unclean people they're not Jews so the temple lets them worship but they have their own special little place for them like all you Gentiles you have to sit over here because you're not good enough to be with us so you know of course we're Gentiles so we can relate to that if we were there during that period of time we'd have to sit somewhere else well here's what happened the money changers and the people who are selling these animals they bring all these animals they bring the doves they bring everything in they set up in the court of the Gentiles can the Gentiles worship now absolutely not there's no place for them this is all crowded and full of people so they're crowding out the Gentiles who have come from all over the civilized world to worship God in the temple. Now they have no place to go because they can't go in any other place because they're Gentiles. Okay, the merchants sold sacrificial animals at a high price. They took advantage of those who had come very long distances and they couldn't bring an animal with them when they had to travel on this long journey. They just couldn't bring anything with them. They just knew that they had to buy it once they got there. The money changers exchanged, exchanged all the international currency for the special temple coins. The only money the merchants would accept. Now are you seeing what's going on here? We have these money changers sitting over here and they're saying, well those guys that are selling the animals they're not going to take your money because your money's from another land so you have to come over here and you have to do an exchange you know kind of like when we go over into canada and we have to exchange our uh well a lot of a lot of places just go ahead and take american money but you know there is an exchange rate well so many people that came from all over the world had no idea what the exchange rate was i mean if i went over to canada today and they told me i had to exchange my american money for canadian money i wouldn't know what the exchange rate of course i would ask i'm sure that people that were coming in here were asking but guess what these guys were not real honest with them jesus knew that okay so the money changers exchange all this international currency that's coming in in order to buy these sacrificial animals and these doves the only money that the merchants would accept were these temple coins so they often deceived foreigners who didn't know the exchange rate there wasn't a sign you couldn't go on the internet they didn't know what the exchange rate was so here give me your foreign money and here I'll give you these this little pittance back that ex it, it exchanged for they didn't know the difference okay their commercialism in God's house frustrated people's attempts to worship I mean now we're now now we're not just talking about the Gentiles we're talking about the Jews that had come from everywhere and they're trying 
to exchange their money they're trying to buy these sacrificial animals that they will that will be used in the temple and guys they can't get it done because here's all these people doing these things that are just rotten and illegal and dishonest and so of course Jesus is angered he is greatly angered this interruption of worship had to be stopped by Jesus who had righteous anger oh there it is so there's a difference there's righteous anger and there's unrighteous anger correct okay well let's look at that just a minute this incident is going to show us some certain things about Jesus now first of all righteous anger is often described as righteous indignation have you read that before righteous indignation that's a type of anger and typically it's a reactive emotion of anger over perceived mistreatment insult or malice toward other people so did you get that when it's righteous anger when it's righteous indignation that means that the person who is angry is angry because they can see and hear and watch someone who is perfectly honest, trying to do the right thing, being taken advantage of. That's what's happening here, and that's why Jesus got so angry. Now, what's the difference in righteous indignation or righteous anger and just getting mad? Guys, the difference is self-control. Don't let your anger control you. We're told, don't come under the control of anything. You know, that's why when we're looking at um, things that, that we do, that we think, okay, well, uh, you know, like I love sugar. And if I eat too much sugar, all I want is more sugar. And so when we have uh, something that controls us, we have to stop. If we're smoking, if we're drinking, if we're gambling, see all these things are things that come under the heading of if it controls you, then God isn't in control. Do you see what I'm saying? Okay. Now, Jeremiah 7, 11 is where the Lord said through Jeremiah, Jeremiah the prophet wrote this down. This was like 627 or five, through 586 is when he prophesied. So let's just round it off and say 600 years before Christ was even born, Jeremiah the prophet prophesied that the temple would become a den of thieves. Jesus is quoting when he says it has turned into a den of thieves, and he's quoting the prophet Jeremiah, and that's like I said in Jeremiah 7, 11. Jesus' anger was specifically directed against those who made it impossible for ordinary people to worship in the house of God. God will not hold guiltless those people who interfere with worshiping him. Oh, let's think about that for today. We have to guard ourselves against a spirit of bitterness, argument, and strife that can manifest in the church and make it impossible to worship. You know, when we go to church to worship, what we should feel is love. We should feel like we're surrounded by, by uh, brothers and sisters that have a like faith and we're all there for the same reason. Church should fill your cup back up after it's been emptied through a week of uh, things that have happened that have really brought you down. Then you come to church and get your cup refilled. What a beautiful thing that we have the opportunity to do. But it's really important that we keep the right spirit of worship and love in church and not look around at other people and say, oh, but they shouldn't be here. You know, I'm worthy. I need to be here, but they're not worthy because I know what they do. Guys, I'm going to tell you something. We had a lesson about that a couple weeks ago, and Jeremy also did a wonderful sermon on it, and that is, you know, God loves everybody. And just because uh, someone has been doing something they shouldn't be doing, they still have the opportunity to make a U-turn and come to Christ and change their lives. And it's not for us to judge that. So, um, okay. 
jesus didn't clear everybody out of the temple we're going to we're going to hear that in the next couple of verses he cleared this gentile area where all this is going on but he didn't clear everybody out we're going to know that in just a minute because i'm going to read some more scripture and then we're going to be out of time but the blind and the lame were still there so here's what we know the guilty fled those who really needed to be with Jesus and be in his company, they stayed. They didn't have to run. They wanted to stay and see Jesus. They weren't doing anything wrong. Okay, Jesus gave us this incredible example of righteous anger here. And if you read Ephesians 4 and 26, it says, be angry and yet do not sin. Oh man. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. And do not give the devil an opportunity. And I think it says a foothold. I'd have to go back and read it in King James. But what it's saying is don't give the devil an opportunity to take over your life. To get in. You know, I remember when uh, Roger and I were married like 51 years ago in the Wewoka Church of Christ. The minister talked to us before we were married. And I will never forget, he said, here's the most important thing. Never let the sun go down on your anger. Because if you maintain an angry spirit, and you wake up with it, and you go to sleep with it, and you carry it, then it will take over your marriage. What wonderful advice. And, you know, and I'm going to tell you, that's a really hard thing to do, too. It's not let the sun go down on your anger. But that's in Ephesians 4 and 26. And then in 27 it says, Do not give the devil an opportunity. And remember, remember this, Jesus was sinless even in anger. So he could get angry, but it was for the right reason. It was righteous anger. You know, we read in Scripture that God was angry. God got angry at Solomon. And this is in 1 Kings 11, 9 and 10. And Jesus also got angry in another place. This is in Mark 3 and 5. Because he was criticized before healing the man with a crippled hand on the Sabbath day. Now, isn't it interesting if you've had someone, a minister or someone who said to you, you can't get angry, that's a sin. Depends on what it's about. Jesus gives the example of what is righteous anger. So let's stop there with the lesson this morning. Let's dwell on that a minute. And I would ask you if you would please go to the Lord in prayer for those people that I ask you to, to talk to him about. And I hope I see you at church. And I pray that this is going to be an incredible, wonderful Sunday morning for you. Thank you for being with me.